Hello, welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Emi Nakata. Today, Chizuru Tateno, a credit analyst from Standard & Poor's Ratings Japan, is here with us today to discuss the third quarter results of Japan's major securities groups. Thank you, thank you for joining us, Chizuru. Thank you, Emi. So three of the four securities groups managed to post higher profits and revenues compared to the previous quarter. Could you please give us a quick rundown of the results? That's correct. The three groups managed to increase their revenues and profits in the third quarter thanks to higher trading volume in their retail segment. Could you please tell us more? What led to their profit gains? A large part of their strong performance was due to a favorable domestic stock market, especially in the latter half of the quarter, including December. Equity brokerage commissions of the groups increased significantly in the third quarter from about 10% to 50%. Also, a massive increase in stock sales of um, individual investors that increased um, equity brokerage commissions. Then what was behind that surge in equity sales? There was a surge because individual investors sold their securities holdings just before the preferential tax treatment for securities investments was abolished at the end of December 2013. Most of proceeds from those security sales have been transferred to um, funds in waiting. I see. Well, then what other areas are worth noting in their third quarter performance? As for investment trusts, Nomline Daiwa increased their distribution commissions, while those at Mitsubishi UFJ um, fell slightly and those at SMBC Nikko declined more than 30%. When we look at the net um, asset flows, the net asset flows were negative, which means there were uh, net asset outflows. This indicates um, the net flow of assets under management have not increased despite the growth in commercial incomes. Um, then besides retail, um, how did the brokerages perform in other segments such as wholesale? Yes, in the wholesale segments, Nomula and Daiwa increased their revenues and profits in the third quarter. As for Nomura's global, uh, global markets, We saw increased revenues from securitized products in the Americas. This is because of our favorable market conditions and increase in customer flow. On the other hand, the revenues from Asia fell from the previous quarter. Also, Nomula posted about 10 billion yen of FVA losses, funding variation adjustments for derivatives. As a result, revenues of Nomura was almost flat from the previous quarter. As for Daiwa, increased trading volume of structured bonds and uh, foreign stocks pushed up its equity-rated trading revenues. Looking at investment banking businesses, there were few underwritings of sizable deals in the third quarter. So revenues of both Nomura's and Daiwa's investment banking business were subdued when we exclude Nomura's one-time gains, uh, appraisal gain. I see. Um, then looking ahead, what are the factors that will affect the results of Japan's major brokerages in the fourth quarter of 2013? Yes, um, we think there will be two factors that will influence the future earnings trend 
of those securities groups. First, we'll be keeping an eye on whether individual investors will reinvest funds in waiting, which gen they generated from their stock sales in the third quarter. The second key will be NISA. NISA, the Nippon Individual Savings Account System, had started in January 2014. At this moment, however, we think the securities groups have yet to expand their new customer network. They have said that most of NISA accounts are currently held by existing customers. It's too early to tell if the NISA system will help them to expand their retail revenues. We think that depends on whether the NISA system will be accepted by new investors, especially the young generations and also whether the, their investments um, will go beyond the NISA accounts. I see. Thank you for your insights, Tizuru. Thank you. For more detail, please visit our website at www.ratingsdirect.com. Thank you for joining us today.